Okay, so let's continue from where we left last time. Just a second. Okay. So we were here, but before I proceed, let's go back and see what we were doing. So we were looking at these S matrix elements, which are basically these. Um, these objects. So you have an in state here with m lab, uh, with m momenta and n uh, uh, momenta for the out state. Okay, and there are no other labels as I said last time. For example, if you had a theory which had um, particles with electric charges, then you will have those electric charges also appearing in this list. But here all the particles are identical with the same mass and no electric charge because I am looking at a real scalar field theory. Okay. So, there are no other labels <coughs> and let us look at the algebra that we are doing so that we can keep track of some factors and if you make a mistake we will hopefully catch it. So, here in this step we get a factor of root 2 omega k 1 when we pull out or when we get rid of the momentum k 1 from the in state. Okay? So, that is coming from normalization and that k 1 get replaced by a in dagger k 1. Okay? And then of course, there is a minus sign coming because of this thing which we did. And when I replace a out dagger and a in dagger in terms of this a dagger t or a dagger minus t, I get a factor of 1 over square root of z. So, I get root 2 omega k 1 over square root of z okay, when I get rid of momentum k 1. So, at least these two factors are going to appear. Then here in this step, you see you got a time derivative of a t dagger. Okay, and that brings in a factor of minus i. So, that cancels this, but you get a factor of i. Let me show you. Now, I have numbered the pages, so I know where it is. Um, it is on page 20 or 21. Yeah, here. <coughs> so, here we had seen long back that if you, so this is the a t dagger, okay, which is defined like this. And if you take the time derivative of this object in, in the above expression, so this is time derivative of a t dagger, you see it is minus, it is exactly the same, same thing as above, okay, it is identical expression. So, I am taking time derivative of a t dagger and the result is minus i times this integral. Okay. So, this is a source of an i in our uh, calculation and of course, this minus i kills the minus sign we had there. So, okay, let us go back. So, one source of i is this one. Yeah, here. Okay, so what we say is when I get rid of k1, I get root 2 omega k1, I get 1 over square root of z, and also how do I move it? And also when I convert this time derivative of a t dagger in terms of the field phi, okay, then apart from other things I bring a factor of minus i okay, and that minus i uh, that minus i gets killed to give you a plus i over square root of z. So, you see at this stage here uh, what I have achieved is that k 1 is gone there is no reference to a in or a out the only thing we have is the field phi. So, this expression involves phi okay, the field and the overall factor is i over uh, i times root 2 omega k 1 over square root of z. 
okay and what we will see is that the same overall factor comes again when you get rid of the label k2 okay which is which is here okay so with this in mind let's proceed we have to keep track of many things now mm, yeah <coughs> so at this stage yeah so where is it yeah this is a shorthand notation for um, the out state. I have suppressed the labels and here. So finally I got this overall factor which I have talked about times this integral with some function with the function f which we have seen several times times this differential operator acting on this object. Okay, this matrix element of phi. Okay, and then we started looking at uh, only this matrix element of phi. Okay, and we repeated similar steps. So you see again, I am uh, bringing, I am getting rid of k two, and <coughs> I have brought in a in dagger that comes with the square root of two omega k two. Okay, and again this step, which. Um, Okay, so now I'm looking at only this factor. This gives you one over square root of z, as I said before, because now you are converting a dagger out and a dagger in in terms of a dagger of t and a dagger of minus t. So you get one over root z, and then and then that's where we are. Yeah. And that's where we are. So we haven't yet taken uh, del naught of eighty dagger. So there is nothing to be said here. Okay, good. So we had eventually arrived at this expression minus i integral d cube x f k two time order product of some brackets are. Um, not very properly placed. Let me see this phi x one. Okay, so I'll just look at my notes. That will be easier. So one over root z. This is fine. This is fine. T minus i. Okay, this is. Uh, square bracket okay so this one is closing here and then you have okay so this entire thing in the round brackets is time ordered okay i should not have missed this now this is equal to let's check minus i d cube x time order product of fk2 del not phi minus this Okay, that is fine, and then you have minus i d cube x f k two t del naught phi times phi x one. So this bracket is missing. So this is these two operators are time ordered minus del naught f k two x, and then time order product of this, and here is the curly bracket closing. Okay, so this is fine. Now, now you see here, you have in this in this term second term. So these are just functions and derivatives, but the operator content is in here. So the time order product of phi of t x and phi of x one. Here also we have almost the same thing. Time order product of del naught of phi t x phi of x one. Okay, now if I could interchange or take the del uh, del naught outside of t, then I would have time order product of phi times 
phi of x times phi of x1 and this will also have time order product of phi times phi x1 phi of x n times phi of x1 okay and these two will be the same factors now let's see whether we can indeed take this del naught outside of the time ordering operator okay so here is so <coughs> i claim um how should i do okay so here so i claim that time order product of phi x t and phi x prime okay by x prime i mean t prime and vector x prime this and if you take the time derivative with respect to t this is same as time order product of del not phi let me this is the lower del t okay and this is kind of obvious because <coughs> because if you take this uh, this time or take look at the left hand side you have time order product of these two operators so let's say x uh, the time t is smaller than the time t prime so here this is phi of t prime x prime okay so let's say t prime is smaller okay then you have this sitting on the right and then phi x t sitting on the left okay and if other way around then you just interchange the order now when you take a time derivative with respect to t that field phi is the time derivative is at that time right so del phi over del t is an object which is still defined at the time t so the ordering doesn't get affected because of the time derivative and this is what is uh, the claim okay but nevertheless i will do some algebra to show you but it should be clear that this is a result which we should get okay just because taking a time derivative of a function at which is defined at some time will not change will give you another function which is again defined at the same time but nevertheless let me show this to you <coughs> so we have del over del t what is um the subject this is theta of t minus x 1 0 that's the step function okay so only when t is greater than x 1 0 this is one otherwise this factor is zero times phi x t phi x okay i x 1 not x prime i am i'm writing x 1 okay plus theta of x1 not minus t phi x1 phi x t okay that's the way you can write time order product of these two operators and then you have the time derivative so let's just do uh, the differentiation so time appears in this theta and in this phi this one does not have t so that's just going to sit out as a constant so you have theta of t minus x1 not times del over del t of phi x t times phi x1 plus now i differentiate theta t minus x1 not and that gives you a delta function delta of t minus x1 not times this function okay 
we will do the same thing to the second term here okay and it gives theta of x 1 naught minus t <coughs> phi of x 1 that is a constant and then I have I take a time derivative on this one del over del t phi of x t okay then I get minus delta of x 1 naught minus t okay. so I differentiate this theta function I get minus of this delta function okay <coughs> Okay, so this is what we get, and you see that these two terms they just cancel. So th this hits when t is equal to x one naught. The same is here, t equal to x one naught. Otherwise, this is zero. Okay, the delta function vanishes. So it makes phi of x t, and again. Or, or let us say phi of x, uh, uh, x, x 1 naught and phi of x 1, x 1 naught. Similarly here and these two cancel, okay, they are identical. So, you are left with this term which is just time order product of del over del t phi x t. Both of these terms have identical factor here times phi x 1 and you see it they are time ordered because you have these theta function or unit step functions which tell which way it is ordered. Okay, so, we have uh, shown that indeed what is um, what we can argue simply is true by showing this algebra also. Okay, so, we will use this and I will take this and substitute it in here. Okay, so, I will pull out the time derivative and put to the left right, because that is what I have shown that I can interchange the order of uh, I, I, can in, I can take the time derivative inside the time ordering operator or pull it outside either way. So, this gives you what this gives you So, we will continue from here. So, this gives you um, yeah. So, I will write continue from that page. So, you have minus i d cube x and then you have f k 2 f k 2 t x maybe I should go to my note that will be better f k to t x and you can uh, meanwhile also write from your own notes. So, del naught so I am pulling out the, the derivative here del naught time order product of phi x t phi x 1. Okay, minus del naught f k 2 x t time order product of phi x t times phi x 1. Okay, curly brackets not, um, yeah, should not put this. Okay, so that is good. Now, with this I can hmm. okay. 
fk2 this is good okay so let's go back and see what we have done <coughs> so here we were only manipulating this this piece this um, the thing in the curly brackets okay now we should look at this entire thing also so i have to take a time derivative of whatever i have written down here okay and integrate over x naught and put 1 over root z okay and that is what gives you a dagger k2 a dagger out k2 phi minus phi times a in dagger k2 so maybe i should write down this entire thing so it, it's easier to read so what i have shown now is that a out k2 Okay, this thing is equal to one over root z limit t going capital T going to infinity minus t one minus i epsilon to t one minus i epsilon dx zero. So let's see. This is up to here. Okay, that's what I have written on that new sheet, and then I should take a time derivative of this object. So let's do that. Then I should take a time derivative of this expression here, this one. Okay. I'm, so I'm going to write that one out. Minus i integral d cube x f k two x t del naught of phi x t phi x one minus del naught of f k two x t Time order product phi x t times phi x one. Okay, so I have just substituted everything, but remember this also, this expression also has to be put back into here in this one. Okay, but we'll come to that later. okay so what do we get then so here you have a time derivative this del not is del over del t right so that it acts on this function f because you have time dependence in here and it acts on this phi or, or this entire object similarly it acts on this and on this entire object so if i do that i will get the following One over square root of z, limit t going to infinity. Okay, I will just write dx naught. I will not write the limits explicitly. Okay, then you have d cube x from here. And then let's collect everything else. So this i minus i, I am going to pull out and write here. Minus i. Okay, everything, all the factors are taken care of, and then I get del naught acting on f k two. Then del naught of. I'm just doing the uh, differentiation. Phi x t times phi x one. Okay. Then second time the derivative acts on this one, so I get f k two 
times del naught square because del naught acting on del naught gives you del naught square of this operator okay now let's look at the other term second term again del naught acts on this so it gives you minus del naught square acting on fk2 times time order product of phi xt phi x1 and then you get minus del naught fk2 and then the derivative acts on this time order product. Okay, so let us see the first term here and the last term here del naught of k2, del naught of k2, del naught of this time order product and here del naught of the same time order product. They come with opposite signs, so these two cancel. Okay. So, what are we left with is just um, correct del naught square acting on this f k 2 and then you have del naught square acting on f k 2 okay? and del naught square acting on. So, you, you write down the expression of f k 2 that you already know. Okay? Take the time derivative twice and substitute in here and you will get the following. You will get the following result. F k 2 x t remember F k 2 is an exponential function, the time dependence is exponential. So, you will get f k 2 back when you differentiate twice here. So, that is why I am able to uh, take it out and you have del naught square here okay. and this one will give you minus gradient square plus m p square. Okay. Just doing the differentiation will give you this thing and then you have the time order product of <coughs> okay so this is what we get and this is what is sometimes written as box plus mp square okay this operator box is just del naught square minus gradient square Okay, very nice and um, good. So, now I will take this and substitute in this. Where is it? Yeah, in this, in this expression, okay, so that I obtain what this factor is. Okay, so I am going to write down now this vector. So, what we have is now uh, maybe I should write down this gives um, P 1 to P n phi x 1 k 2 to k m and this is in state that is out state. Okay. Remember if you are getting lost in the algebra just remember that we are one after one removing these momenta from the in state and replacing by phi's. Okay, that is what we are doing and this is what we had got this factor we had gotten when we had done it for the first time. Okay. When I took this thing 
this inner product and when I first time replaced k1 I had gotten this expression okay apart from some integrals and some functions and uh, de derivative operators I was left with the matrix element involving one label less in the in state and had replaced that by phi. So, I am writing result for that factor now. So, this now I have shown that this is equal to um, 2 omega k 2 square root i over root z. Okay, remember, because I am going to remove this k 2, I am going to get this factor root 2 omega k 2 and also remember I get i over root z every time I repeat these steps as I had talked earlier. So, I am going to get this times limit t going to infinity okay. and instead of using x here the variable I was writing as x I will just because this is dummy I will just write it as x 2. Okay. So, d 4 x 2 then you have f k 2 x 2 t then we have box 2 okay, the box is with respect to the label x 2. So, I am writing box 2 with the subscript 2 this and then we have out p 1 to p n time order product of phi x 2 phi x 1. Okay, I will write that in the next line. times box 2 plus m p square okay, where m p is the physical mass Okay, so, I have now from k 3 to k m, I have gotten rid of k 1 and k 2 and instead of those I have got two fields here which are time order product okay, and then <coughs> this um, these operators. So, now I will take this and put back into um, this expression here expression a. Okay, and that is what I am going to do now. So, S now we are almost there at least as far as making our first important result explicit is concerned I have the following. So, this is the S matrix element I have shown that this is equal to so, I am substituting back into this expression. Okay. So, I get <coughs> i over root z when I get phi x 1 phi of x 1 and times root 2 omega k 1 and then I get again i over root z and root 2 omega k 2 when I have phi x 2. So, I will take care of those. So, I have <coughs> i over square root of z into i over square root of z twice because I have these two factors then I have 2 omega k subscript 1 then again root 2 omega k 2 I do not know why I said subscript 1 and then I have integral d 4 x 1 d 4 x 2 f k 1 of x 1 <coughs> f k 2 of x 2 times you have 
box 1 plus mp square, box 2 plus mp square. Okay, remember we got these operators every time, each time and these act on this um, this matrix element. Okay. Okay, now you can imagine what will happen if we were to get rid of K3, K4 up to Km. Okay. Each time I do that, I will bring in a factor of i over square root of z, a corresponding 2 omega k, let us say next one is k3, so two, root 2 omega k3. Then you will have a new uh, integral d4, uh, d4 x3, then you will have f of x3, f k3 x3. Then you will have a corresponding differential operator here, box 3 plus mp square this thing and you are going to get time order product of phi x1, phi x2 and phi x3 and then one label less and then again you repeat until you hit the vacuum. So, at the end you will have only vacuum left okay? and then you will have a bunch of I mean all these things will be correspondingly repeated. So, I am going to write down that result. So, if you continue removing these labels k one by one you are going to get eventually i over square root of z. How many such factors? m such factors because they are m labels in the in state. So, each time you get this. So, you have a factor of m. Then you will get 2 omega k 1 uh, square root of 2 omega k 1 square root of 2 omega 2 and so forth. So, you will get this let me write here product of i or maybe just write that way. k 1 times k m. Okay, so, this is also a factor that you are going to get. Then okay. <coughs> times f k 1 x 1 f k 2 x 2 f k m x m okay? times these differential operators And then eventually you have um, time order product of phi x one, phi x two, phi x m. Okay. And you have vacuum here. We have gotten rid of all the, um, I mean the entire instate and we have replaced it by the vacuum. Okay. Now, if uh, we should do the same thing to the out state. Okay. 